Rahim. In this video, we are going to study the pulse code modulation, the PCM. Pulse code modulation is used to convert analog signal to digital signal. An analog signal's amplitude can take on any value in the continuous range. This means that it can take on infinite number of values. On the other hand, digital signal amplitude can take on a finite number of values, which is normally in, in 2 power, for example, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, etc. So the digital signal can have finite number of amplitudes, while the analog signal can infinite can have infinite number of amplitudes. Now to convert the analog signal to digital signal, that is, in PCM we have three basic steps: sampling, quantization, and encoding. First is sampling. Sampling is used to convert a continuous time signal to discrete time signal. I have already uh, discussed sampling in, in detail in my previous video. Suppose I have a signal X of T or M of T. Now this signal and a continuous pulse signal which is denoted by delta of T or the C of T which I previously denoted are both added to the multiplier or sampler. As a result, we have sampler, sampled signal and this X of T or M of T has a band limited amp can be represented by this. And as a result, when we have a sampled signal, the, the spectrum of that signal is like this. This is for the case when Fs is equal to 2 Fm or Omega S is equal to 2 Fm. So sampling is basically used to convert a continuous time signal to discrete time signal. And Nyquist rate is followed for sampling. The Nyquist rate is that the sampling frequency must be greater than or equal to the two times the maximum frequency. In this case, we have this type of spectrum because we have taken Fs is equal to 2 Fm. Now, if we no, don't follow the sampling rate, that is, if Fs is not greater than equal to 2 fm that is if the sampling frequency is less than 2 fm then we have overlapping over here so this is our sampling where we have the sampling frequency greater than 2 fm this is perfect sampling or ideal sampling where we have sampling frequency is equal to 2 fm in these both cases i can recover the signal from the sampled signal but in this case when the sampling frequency is less than 2 fm we have under sampling in this case we haven't followed the Nyquist criteria and because of this we have overlapping over here and this overlap region in case of under sampling represents aliasing effect and this aliasing effect can be removed by two ways either to take the sampling frequency greater than 2 fm that is to follow the Nyquist criteria if not we can use anti-aliasing filters so to remove this aliasing effect we can use the anti-aliasing filters now next is quantization what quantization is basically rounding off the values to one of the closest permissible numbers or quantized levels now if we can have a look over here we have 16 quantized levels over here these quantized levels are denoted by l so i'm going to say l is equal to 16 now the magnitude of each of these quantized level that is from 14 to 15 to 13 to 15 the difference is given as 2 mp divided by l here for example mp is the maximum amplitude of the message signal mp is the maximum amplitude of this message signal whereas minus mp is the minimum amplitude of this message signal so if MP is the maximum amplitude of the message signal and minus MP is the minimum amplitude of the message signal, then this difference is going to be equal to, let me denote it by del V, that will be equal to 2 MP divided by the L. So this will be equal to, so this will be equal to, let me write it again, 2 MP divided by L, where L is the number of quantized levels. Now how do we assign these values? Each sample amplitude is approximated by the midpoint value of the subinterval in which the sample falls. So we are going to take values. What we are going to do that for example I am here if this is greater than the midpoint I am going to assign 10 to it. 
if this is less than the midpoint i'm going to assign 9 to it so if the amplitude all this amplitude get greater than the midpoint of this between 9 and 10 will be assigned 10 and less than the midpoint of 9 and 10 will be assigned 9 so is the case of other cases so is the uh, case for other levels for example between 12 and 9 if the amplitude is greater than the mid of uh, 12 and 13 i am going to assign it 13 if the amplitude is less than the mid of 12 and 13 i am going to assign it 12 so in this way i am going to assign quantize levels which are in this case 16 levels now the third process is encoding because we have 16 levels so each number can be represented by four binary pulses or four binary digits zero can be represented by zero one by this two by zero zero one zero three by zero zero one one and so on fifteen by one 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 so each number each of these quantized levels which are 16 in number are represented by binary numbers and this process is called encoding so encoding is basically converting those numbers converting those levels to binary pulses so by sampling quantization and encoding we are able to convert a analog signal to a digital signal for example the audio signal bandwidth is about 15 kilohertz but the frequency components about about 3.4 kilohertz are very weaker so they can be suppressed without affecting the audio signal in this case the sampling rate is taken as 8 kilohertz instead of the two times of the 3.4 kilohertz which is 6.8 kilohertz it is taken at 8 kilohertz because to avoid unrealizable filters required for signal reconstruction so each sample is finally quantized into 256 levels which requires a group of 8 binary pulses to encode each sample so this te telephone signal requires 8000 multiplied by 8 that is 64 binary pulses per second other example is the compact disc compact disc is the other application of the pcm in this case the sampling rate is 44.1 kilohertz and the number of levels are 65536 thank you